welcome in simple versus weighted averages at some point you're going to have to deal with averages and you most likely will be doing word problems based on these simple versus weight averages so let's take a look here i'm going to try my best to show you what the differences are i'll show you some examples and hopefully maybe it will clarify a few things so that when you are working out averages in general you can tell which ones are simple and then which ones are weighted it will take you time you're going to have to do quite a lot of examples to be able to be kind of proficient in it but let's give it a shot now an average in general what happens is if you are given a quantity which you have measured so maybe mass maybe volume maybe some flow rate for medications maybe your grades right in school you know you typically will have multiple measurements um, and when you have multiple measurements of a quantity, uh, sometimes what we wanna do is we wanna take all of those measurements and really just approximate them in some way, in some good way, which we call an average, that just as one number instead of always writing, you know, three, four, five, and so on. So for instance, if you're gonna be talking about your grade, let's say how well you did in science, for instance, you don't wanna list all the different grades that you got on your projects and on your tests and maybe on your assignments and so on throughout the whole year or in quizzes what you want is you just would want to tell somebody basically your average okay so in general kind of how well you score and that is something that you actually do in multiple cases with numerous measurements in business in engineering in healthcare where we have multiple measurements but we just wanna summarize them in just kind of one to get an idea and a gist of that. And that's what an average actually does. So it's interested in taking multiple measurements and taking those multiple measurements in some particular way, taking multiple measurements of a quantity and then trying to approximate it just by simply having one measurement or one number for it, which we basically just call an average. And now these averages can be simple or they can be weighted averages. So now what's the difference? If you're going to take a simple, so let me define it here for us. If you're gonna take a simple average, then what you are referring to is to an average where you're taking the sum, so you're gonna be adding up sum all measurements that you were given, all measurements, okay, of a quantity, whatever that quantity might be. So let's say maybe mass, maybe volume, maybe your grades, and you're going to divide it by the total number of measurements that you have. So divided by the total number of measurements. So that is a simple average. So again, so the key point here is you're going to add all of them up, whatever quantity that they are representing. So you're gonna be adding them up and then you're gonna be dividing by the total number of the measurements that you carry. So that is a simple average definition. Let's take a look at an example and then I'm gonna come back okay, after the example uh, or a couple of examples, then start talking about the difference with the weighted average. Now, the one thing that I want you to know here is that in simple averages, when we take this sum and then we divide it by the total number of all of these measurements that we carry, we are making a very distinct assumption. That assumption is, and this is where the word weight comes in, that the weight of each measurement is the same. 
Now, what does that mean? You know, the weight of each measurement is the same. What that actually means is that no matter which measurements you have, it doesn't have more emphasis than another measurement. They're all equal. It doesn't really matter how many measurements you carry. They're all equally weighted, meaning that there is no preference for one or the other. So that's what you actually are doing. So that's an important fact that we kind of have within these simple averages, that we don't really distinct between one being more emphasized than another one. So as I said, so let's take a look at an example. So here is an example. You have three boxes. So one of the boxes has a mass of 12.5 kilograms. Another one has 8.7 kilograms. The third box has 19.5 kilograms. And now we're going to calculate the average mass of the boxes. So instead of having three measurements, I just want to have one measurement, which kind of approximates those three in some good way, which we call an average. And we want to supposed to be rounding this to the tenth. So in this case, like any word problem that I take on, so the first thing I do is just try to find what quantity I'm uh, actually looking for. Well, they tell me what the quantity is. It's actually mass, and I'm trying to find the average. Now, the units that I'm going to be using, so in this particular case, um, so notice that I do have kilograms in all my, so this is actually all consistent. So I can go ahead and add them when I get to that point. And since it is an average, it's going to be kilograms, you know, per box because I'm actually having three boxes. So my unit is gonna be not just kilograms, but it's gonna be kilograms per box. Okay? And it's gonna come out from our calculation. Now, my givens within this example, so I have, you know, let's say box number one, I know that it is 12.5 kilograms. I know that box number two is 8.7 kilograms. That box number three is 19.5 kilograms. I can see that all my units here are consistent. So they're all kilograms, which is what I want. So that's what you have to make sure, of course. And now, okay, so I'm going to just say, so let and I am solving for mass, I'm going to put mass, but I'll put this little AVE in terms of average. So that's how that's the symbol that I'm going to use M for mass because that's what I'm computing, but it's the average mass. So let M average. Okay, so B the average mass so that the reader actually knows what I'm solving for. And in terms of the computation itself. So I'm going to take now and think, okay, so is this a simple average? Well, if I go back, okay, so a simple average, we would have the assumption that the weight of each box carries exactly the same amount. Now, when we say weight, we mean preference for it. We don't actually mean the mass itself. And here they don't really distinguish. They just say calculate the average mass, in this case, for the boxes that we have. So they do carry the exact same weight. There isn't that first box has more preference than the second box or than the third box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really just use this simple average definition where I'm going to be adding all my measurements of the quantity. Now my quantity here is mass. So what I have is that my mass average is equal to, so again, it's the addition of all the measurements. So that's going to be 12.5. They're all in kilograms, so I'm not going to write the kilograms. You, you can if you like. So that is the summation of all the measurements. And now I'm going to divide by the total number of measurements that I have. Well, I only had one, two, three measurements. So in this case, okay, if I take this, I can add it up in the numerator and then divide it by three, and I'm going to get an approximation for my mass. And notice that here, so in terms of the units, this was all in kilograms, and it was divided by, and this was actually, okay, boxes, right? So it's kilograms per box. Now let's add it all up. So I have 12.5 plus 
plus 8.7 plus 19.5 you know so equals and this is 40.7 because I'm not sure why that zeros are there okay so this is what we have for that and then it's divided by okay three and now so I can compute that out so this is 40.7 divided by 3 which is 13.5666 now the last step okay, in terms of this is we're going to be rounding to the tenth so I guess it's 13.6 rounded so I'm going to just round that right away so 13.6 now let's not forget our units because once you're done you do want to make sure that you have your unit and that was your average, you know, and if you like, and you know, maybe sometimes your teachers ask you for some closing statement, you can say that the average of the boxes was 13.6 kilograms per box. That is a simple average that you carry where you are summing up all your measurements and you're dividing by the total number of measurements you had. So just how many you had, that's a simple average. Now, another very common simple average is, you know, when students are working and they're trying to calculate their grades. So typically in elementary school and sometimes in high school, you know, you might have numerous assignments and tests and maybe they are worth exactly the same weight. So in this case, it says Johan, who is in grade four, took four tests of equal weight. So notice that it's telling me that there are four tests, but they're of equal weight, meaning one test is not more important than another one. They carry exactly the same weight, which by the way, is not very common. And I'm going to do another example a little bit later on, which is going to be with weighted averages where maybe the tests or assignments or projects are not equally weighted. They don't carry the same importance. So now in this case, what I have is right. I have the scores for the tests. So 72%, 81%, 68, 93. And now I want to find out what the average test score was. So what I'm calculating, so in this case, my quantity that I'm trying to measure is I guess the test score, or I guess you can say average grade. So in that case, what we're going to do is, is this going to be one another example of these simple averages? And the answer is yes, because they actually tell us that they're equally weighted. And here, so I'm going to write down my givens. So that's the first thing that I'll do. My givens are, so here are my test scores. Now, when you're setting this up, it will depend on what your teachers want. You know, if they want to see all of this, it's always nice to write it out so that the teachers kind of know what you are trying to do. So here are all my scores that I had in percent. Okay, so I'm gonna, so let, I'm gonna define, so let maybe G average, so the grade average, okay, for this. Um, I mean, you can say it's a test score, I'll just use G for grade. So let G, okay, average be the average grade. I've defined that. Now I'm going to set up kind of my formula or my equation. And again, in terms of averages, well, what do we do? We add everything up. So in this case, it's 72% plus 81% plus 68% plus 93% divided by, well, how many of these measurements did I have? One, two, three, four. So I had four in total. And then I can go ahead and compute my answers. So again, so I'm going to go back here. So 72 plus 81 plus 68 and plus 93, which is 314. Now this is being divided by four. So I'm going to take my answer and divide it by four, which is going to give me 78.5. Now, I know that I had to round this, round your answer to the one. Well, when they say that, that means one, which is the place value, okay, of ones. Well, the place value of ones is that eight. So that means this is going to get rounded to 79%. Okay, and again, you can put your closing statement if necessary. 
that's another simple average that you run into where you're just adding things up and then dividing by the total number that you had. Now, what's the difference with the weighted averages, right? When you're working out with weighted averages, what happens is that this assumption that we made, so this particular assumption, um, all of a sudden, each measurement is not weighted the same. And when that happens, then you have a weighted average. So for instance, for your grades, what might happen is that the grades you receive, you know, let's say maybe on your first test, are maybe weighted a little bit less than the grades you got on your second test. So maybe your grade, your test number two was more important because maybe it covered more material, maybe it was cumulative or it just added all the material from the term and the, the teachers might say, well, this one might be worth more than the first one, okay? Or vice versa, depending on what you have. But that is very commonly found so your assumption, okay, if the weights are different, if the weights are different for the measurements, then what you have is you don't have a simple average, you have a weighted average. Now, the word average still stays the same, which means we still want to find one number to approximate all the measurements we had, but we're going to do it in a slightly different way, where we're not just adding things up and then dividing by the total number of measurements, because now they don't carry the same weight. So that's something that you have to be careful. So the definition for this, it is a little bit different. So it's still a sum, but it is a sum of all weighted okay so all weighted measured values divided by the total so not the total number of measurements but by the total weights that is the difference so you're going to be dividing by the total weights. So how much, you know, weighted, you know, how much is given to that particular measurement. And let's see this in, in action. Okay. So I'm going to, since we, the last one we did was these test scores. I'm going to do another one. Okay. With these test scores, I'm going to come back to that one in just a moment. So this one looks a little bit more complicated, but it is very realistic. So let's see why this one is called a weighted average and the other one was called just a simple average. So here it says in a grade nine science class, there are two projects and three tests, right? So right off the bat, actually, I'm going to write down here for myself given because I do like to break these down. So I have two projects. All right. So let's say, you know, project number one, we're going to have project number two. And then it says we have three tests. So let's say test number one, test number two, and then test number three. So we have three assessments um, of tests and then two assessments of projects. So in total, five assessments. All right. Now, let's take a look on all the information that they give us for these. They say that project number one carries a weight of 20%. Okay. So notice that this is worth 20%. So 20% of the final grade. So out of the total 100%. Project number two carries 15%. So notice right away that project one and project two are not equally weighted. And this is kind of a bell that should ring to you and you should know that, oh, this is no longer be a simple average. I can't just be adding numbers up and then dividing by the total that I have. I'm going to have to incorporate these weights in some particular way. And I'll show you how these weights are always done. Now, test number one carries a weight of 10%. This is what we have. And again, notice it's different than all the other ones. So, so far, project one carries the most importance because it has the highest weight. 
Now, test number two carries 25%. Okay, so now this one wins out. So that means this is the most important for us. And then test number three carries the remaining weight. Well, so far, so what do we have? We have 20. Okay, so 10, so that's 30. Um, that is 45. Okay, so this is 70 in total, which means, okay, that we have 30% left. Now, for your test scores, okay, so the total has to add up to 100% in some particular way. And unless I made a mistake, okay, they should add up to that 100. And now, so I have the weights and it turns out, now this is not always the case. Sometimes you may have assessments which are worth exactly the same, but in this case, every assessment is actually worth something different. And in terms of importance, it looks like test three is worth the most. So maybe that's kind of a test. Maybe it's one of the exams at the end. Um, test number two is worth the second most. You know, project one, okay, then comes in third and so on. So you have different weights. And that's why we need weighted averages. Because now we have to assign a weight to each of those assessments. Now, how well did we do? Or at least... What do they tell us? Now, up to this point, Isabella, so I guess Isabella is the one who's in grade nine, has completed project one. So she has completed project one. So this is 72%. Now, test number one, so 69%. So this is 69%. And test number two, uh, so test number one so let me move this over Made an error there so she hasn't done project two yet so maybe that's later in the term um, so that's 69 and then test two was 84 all right so let's do that so this one is 84 percent so these two are blank so she hasn't completed them yet so they won't count okay up to that now what is isabella's current grade average in the course Okay, and again, I guess it doesn't say to round to anything, but we'll assume we'll round to the one for us. Now, how do I differ this, okay, so from all the others? So if, again, I mean, I guess I can copy this. Um, did I do it somewhere here? Yeah, so maybe I'll just copy so that I don't have to rewrite this again. So I'm gonna, you know, let the user know, so whoever's reading this, or um, that they have, you know, let's say, let's define this. And you should too, you know, when you're solving this, you should let someone know so that they know what you're actually doing. So here I'm going to try to find, okay, the average grade in this course. Now, the only thing is that so far I've only done these. So I'm not going to incorporate project two and test three into my grade which means that the total is actually not gonna add up to 100% as a weight, and that's okay. Nobody says that it has to add up to 100% when you're finding something. And actually your definition for weighted average doesn't say what the weights should add up to. It just says, you know, calculate the sum of the weighted measurements and then divide it by the total weights that you have. So now, when we say sum of the weighted measurements, what does that mean? What that means is you're going to take your weights and you're now going to scale the measurement that you took. And in order to scale these, what you do is you actually multiply the two. That's the scaling. So project one is 20% and you got 72 Notice that's much different than what we did before because for simple averages, and students sometimes make this error, what they might want to do is this. They might want to say 72% plus 69% plus 84%, and then they might try to divide by three because there are three measurements, or in this case, test scores that were given. This would have been a simple average, and this would only work if the weights on all of these were the same. But notice, are the weights the same? No. Project one is 20, test one is 10, and test two is 25. So this doesn't work. So we can't do this. 
You know, we can't take a simple average. We actually have to create a weighted average. And in order to create a weighted average, you always take your weight. So in this case, it's 20%. And you multiply it. You can keep the percents in there by the actual measurement. So in this case, it's 72%. And then you're going to, because it's weighted averages are still a sum, so you're still going to be adding. So I've added the first one. Now you're gonna add the second one. That's this. Notice that this percentage of 20, okay, is scaling our actual measurements. So that first one is gonna be a lot more than the second one because the second one is actually um, 10 and the first one is 20 in terms of the weight. So first one carries double the weight of the first test. And then lastly, so you're gonna be adding, and this would be the last one which we have, which is given, which is 25 times 84. And those are all your weights which are different. And now you're going to divide this, not by three, but weighted averages. So if you go back to that definition, it says divide by the sum of the weights. Well, the sum of the weights is 20, because those are my weights, 20 plus 10 plus 25, because you are weighting the actual measurements themselves. And there you have it. Now you can go ahead and try to compute this average and what it would be. So let's do that. So I'm going to punch all of this in. So 20 times 72 plus 10 times 69 plus 25 times, I forget what that was, 84 equals. So that is my 4,230. That's the weighted sum. And now we're going to be dividing and now we divide by, so notice at the bottom there, so maybe I'll switch it like this. We have 20 plus 10, which is 30, plus 25, which is 55. So we're gonna be dividing by the weight. So we're gonna take our answer and divide it by 55. And we get you know, 76.909 and so on. Although it didn't say, I still will round to the one. Okay, so I'll say I'll round it right here to 77%. And that is your current average. So Isabella, who was taking, I guess, this class, would currently be standing at a 77% average based on the weights that she had. And that's the difference between simple averages and weighted averages. And that's what you will have to be aware of as you solve these. So I hope that this was useful in some particular way. Now, I want to throw one more example at you, which kind of blends the simple and also the weighted kind of one into one. Okay. And this one is an interesting question as well. So I'm going to kind of go up here. And I think it's worth for you to watch and try to solve. Okay. So it seems complicated in terms of an average question. So let's see what it says. So at BR Hospital, there are two shifts. There's a morning shift and then the night shift for x-ray technologists, um, which, by the way, sometimes might be common because they might work 12-hour shifts. So the morning shift is considered to be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then the night one is from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., all right? So that is um, just the shift definitions. The morning shift technologists make $31.25 per hour and the night shift technologists make 33.75 per hour so they make more which typically might sometimes happen because they want to give you some premium okay to be working the night shifts but that's irrelevant for our question okay so why that may happen um let's see what they're going to ask us so the hospital has six morning shift technologists and three night shift technologists what is the average hourly rate of pay round your answer to the set okay so again so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to find okay what are they asking me for so they're asking me for the hourly rate now hourly rate of pay so it's going to be in dollars per hour in some way um and here 
you know, what is that hour, average hourly rate of pay? And this is, I guess, amongst all the different, you know, um, staff members they have. So they have six in the morning and then three in the night shift. So let's see how we would break this down. So what is given? So we have, so we have an AM shift and then we have some PM shift or maybe um, AM and night. So let's maybe do that morning and night. So we have a morning which is really a day shift. That's maybe I'll be more even. So this is a night, there's a day shift, and then there's a night shift. Okay. Now, the fact when they work, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., doesn't really matter and doesn't actually come into play into our calculations at all. And this is where you're gonna have to try numerous examples to slowly get acquainted with these and then how to actually set these averages up. So during the day, okay, so how much do they make? Well, they make 31.25 per hour. Now they, how many were, there are six of these, okay? So there are six morning shifts that we have. And in the night, okay, so they make a little bit more, which is 33.75 per hour. But there are only three that are working. So now the question is, is this a simple average that we're calculating or is this a weighted average? Now that's just a technicality in, in, in the real sense. So here, if you had to compute, okay, so and I'm going to say, so let, okay, so this is hourly rate. So R, you know, rate of pay. So let's say RH, so hourly rate is I'm going to just define this is the hourly rate now so to set it up and here's the trap often what you might see is you know people might want to try to do this okay plus 33.75 and then they might divide this by two because they have two measurements right so they will say that, okay, so the average rate would be, okay, just simply take the two payments and then divide it by two. Now, is this correct? This would only be correct if you had the same number of staff members, or in this case, technologists, working each shift because they would have an equal weight, right? But even if you think back of the simple average definition, the simple average definition told you to add up all the measurements that you had. So this really isn't the case. We don't have just two people working. So I can't just divide this by two. So I'm gonna have to try to you know, change this a little bit. So I'm going to you know, move this to give it space here. And in here, so what I'm gonna have to say is, well, how many of these morning shifts did I have? I had six morning shifts. So it's almost like I am doing a weighted average where I am putting an emphasis okay, on the number of people working that morning shift and there were six people working in the morning. So they would be six times 31.25 because that would give you the total number, right? Total number per hour made between those six people. Plus, now how many did I have in the evening or at the night? I had three people working. So notice that these really are just weights. So weights don't necessarily have to be related to percentages in some way like they were in the test scores. So that's where you're gonna have to be careful. And again, you're gonna have to try to practice quite a few examples. And you can look at my playlist for word problems if you like. Maybe I'll put up a, a link up above there and you can walk yourself through the entire playlist to walk, to walk through numerous examples of word problems. So now at the bottom, okay, so what do we put? Again, we can't put two because I don't have just two measurements. We put the weights, okay, or in this case, we count the total number of shifts, okay, which is six plus three. So that's what we would have put at the bottom. And only now can we do the computation to be able to see, you know, what is this hourly rate? 
So I'm going to do it in kind of in one go this time around. So let me take out the calculator here. Let me clear this. So I've, I'll put it all in brackets. So I'll put six multiplied by, so 31.25. Now I'm putting it in brackets because I want to get the entire numerator in one go, plus three times 33.75, um, because I don't have this fractional long division that I put in here, I just put it in as numbers. So that's why I put the brackets divided by, and it's divided by nine, right? Because six plus three is that. So I'll just put that in here. So what that means is that on average, between those nine people, they would be making, now it's rounding to the cent, so that means it's two decimal places. So they would be making approximately $32.08 per hour. And that is a weighted average. It can be thought of also as a simple average because you're just counting the total number that you had, which means 31.25, six times, you would have to add that up and then 33.75, three times, you would have to add all that up, and then divided by nine, which is the total number of people that you actually have working. So it's a blend between simple and weighted averages here. I hope that this gives you some sense and then being able to distinguish between these simple and then these weighted averages. So these are just four examples, but of course, you know, there can be many, many more that you can run into. All right. Okay. So thanks for watching. Hope this was useful. See you in future videos. Bye everybody.